Hello everyone, I'm Kevin. And I'm Paige. And this is our fourth episode of the Kindly Fire Music Cast. So today, for our April episode, we are doing something different and special. We actually have a guest with us, which we've never done before, which is very fun. So um, our guest is very good friends of ours and another staff member on the Kaylin Crier. So would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Elliot. I'm the Center Spread Editor. Wow, yes. Very cool. <laughs> All right. And uh, we are recording for the first time in the, our actual lab at the school. So if audio sounds different or better, let us know. Uh, that's why. So for my first song, I chose Give It Away by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> This song for me, I remember listening to it when I was young, and um, it's just those memories. I listened to it again once I heard it on the radio, and I was like, this song is actually pretty good. So I've been listening to it a lot recently, and I find it's really fun to sing in the car, like especially when you know the lyrics and stuff and you can sing along. It makes it so much more fun. Um, it's just like a funny, fun song, and that's why it's on my list. So for my first song, I have Arrowroot by MF Doom. <laughs> I'm a huge MF Doom fan. Uh, I listen to a lot of his music. I've kind of discovered him only over the past like maybe year and a half, two years. Uh, I first listened to him Food, and then I've listened to a, a, almost all of his other albums since then, and I'm just a major fan. Recently, I kind of discovered an album that I hadn't really listened to before, or hadn't really given the time of day because I just read it and I was like, okay, this doesn't seem interesting. And it's Metal Fingers Presents Special Herbs, the box set volume zero through nine. These are instrumentals that he never ended up using, and they seem like they'd be boring, but they're all really, really good music, even though obviously he's not actually rapping over it. It's instrumentals that he made, and um, like I said, the album's called Metal Fingers. I think it's really funny because, like, or interesting that MF Doom's name, and actually MF doesn't stand for what people would think it stands for, which I obviously can't say, but it actually stands for Metal Fingers or Metal Face, depending on whether or not he's producing or rapping, um, which I think is really interesting. The song is just really well made. It's a really good, like, kind of jazz song that, like, it's a saxophone that's performing with a keyboard and a drum set, but it's also kind of mixed, interestingly. Uh, it's just a really cool vibe. I really like the song. It opens really cool, and it's just kind of chill. I actually really like listening to it when I, like, have to do work, on literally on repeat, because it's just a really good song. So that's why it's my number one. So for my second song, I have Blue Shot by the Jesus Lizard. What a pain to go. I knew of the Jesus Lizard before. Um, I know my dad really, really likes them and saw them. And I actually met the lead singer, like, I'm not sure when, but probably early 2000s or 90s, something like that, which I think is really, really cool. Um, he's met a lot of cool people, and the lead singer of this band is one of them, which I'm super jealous of. Um, but recently I started listening to them. I listened to them a few months back, um, just some of their popular songs, and then I, I, uh, I actually went on a trip over spring break to Texas, and... In the car, this was one of the songs my dad was playing, and I listened to it, and I was like, that is a really good song. So it led me to uh, listen to more of uh, music from this band. The song is really good. I just, like, the lyrics are just, like, weird and interesting, and I really like them, and I also relate them to, like, just other cool things in my life that I think about, and it's a really good song. Um, it's super, like, fast, and just, like, the lyrics are just so fun, and I love seeing it. Another one that, like, when you know the lyrics to a song, it makes it so much more fun. You could sing along. It's just, I just love it. That is why it's on my list. So, for my second song, I have Change Partners by Frank Sinatra. Quite so close With your lips Touching his face 
Can't you see I'm longing to be in his place Won't you change partners and dance with me This song is actually it's not just by Frank Sinatra it's a uh, collaborative with a guy who I'm going to attempt to say his name I'm probably going to say it wrong though it's Antonio Carlos Jobim I think um so the two of them uh both of them were artists obviously from way back in the day and they made an entirely like a, a full collaborative album it's a bunch of recordings of music by them a lot of it is really good most of it's really good of course but this was one of my personal favorites i think it's just a really fun vibe of a song it's a guy singing about how the girl that he's into is dancing with like another guy and like he's saying like you should let me dance with you and then you'll never want to change partners again like he says in the song uh it's just a fun song uh it's got a good vibe to it and I just really like listening to it, so that is why it is my second song. Okay, so my first song is Hard to Concentrate by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Take this moment to make you my family And finally you have found something perfect And finally you have found Death defying this mess I'm buying It's raining down compared to the rest of their like songs is like a different beat and i think it's really cool and it's about like how one of their his band members is like getting married and just kind of like how they're gonna be a family and i have like that's just so sweet i think and um it's just like the lyrics like my lone ranger my, the heat exchanger like i don't know i like just compared to the rest of their music it just sounds like different and even though like a lot of their music is more like upbeat and like popular stuff i just like how it's like slower and yeah, it's my number one. My next song is Joey, covered by Local H. I'm pretty sure it was originally by Concrete Blonde, um, which already was a great song. And then Local H covered it and made it into something different and just something that, personally, I like this one, uh, this cover better than the original song because I just love Local H. They're a great band. Um, like I was saying for uh, Jesus Lizard, my dad actually met the lead singer of Local H twice, which is also something I'm so jealous of because how do you get to do that stuff? That's awesome. But... This song just takes a song that was already, it, it's already a good song in its original form, and they just did something more like, I don't know, more like rock with it, like grunge, whatever, you know, and made it totally something new that sounds like Local H, and I already love their sound, so when they did this and I found it, I was really, really excited, and um, just a great song that deserves to be on my list. For my third song, I have Senior Skip Day by Mac Miller. So last uh, podcast, I had the spins from the same album by Mac Miller. Uh, on my list, and ever since then I've just kind of been listening to more of the album. I haven't even listened to the whole thing in full yet, but I've kind of just heard more songs from it. <clears throat> and I really like Senior Skip Day. I think it's just a really fun vibe, and I, I specifically remember discovering it on the day we took the SAT, and like, it's stupid, but we finished the SAT and we were able to leave school early, and I just hung out with my friends, like, for the, like, a good portion of the day after that, and it just, it was like a really nice day out that, that, it was a really nice out, it was really nice outside that day, Jesus. Um, and like I was listening to the song for the first time when I was driving leaving the school So it was just all a good memory and just kind of like even though we're not seniors We were kind of just like leaving school early and it just kind of related to the song um, It was it like I really just like the way that like the the like high-pitched kind of synth runs at the very beginning of the song And it just kind of goes at the entire song um, 
it's a really good vibe. Uh, I really like what I've heard from this album so far, and so maybe it might reappear in the future, but that's why it's the third one on my list. The next song on my list is Folded Space, Lead Poisoning and Distortion by Combat Wooden Veteran. When the doctors came out, they were visibly exhausted and shaken and stained red with spattered blood. The birth had killed my wife, but the child had survived. I went to a room and saw the baby. I wasn't allowed to hold it, but I stood and looked at it through a haze of confusion and contempt. I took the child home and cared for it. Every time he began to crawl and then walk. Every time it grew deep and bit me. I sat and watched him break every toy I gave him to play with. I picked up the cat dead after he threw it down the stairs and broke his neck. I watched him and felt it. This song is super, super unique in that it's not... It's not... The lead singer of this band is not singing in this song. He's rather talking, telling a story over really cool... It's a... It's like a grindcore punk screamo band, and this... That type of music, the loud drums, everything you would expect from a band like that is being played over this story. So it's a story about a guy who... His wife gave birth. She died during childbirth, but then he just raised the child by himself, and eventually the child just... It's like evil like I don't really know and eventually killed him in the end and it's just super like fast-paced exciting song over this loud music and at parts the music overtakes the lyrics and drowns it out and when I first read the lyrics I was like wow this is really cool um I listened to it a lot and at this point I can literally like talk along with the song even though it's not even singing which I also think is really fun and I also just noticed that on Spotify they changed the album cover it used to be green and pink they just changed it to like a red and neon green which is really cool and I think they've done this multiple times I don't know if it means something but it's just something very cool a really unique song from this band which has um, numerous other amazing songs and that's why it's on my list so for my fourth song I have I believe it's Rhiannon or is it Rhiannon by Fleetwood Mac I'm not sure how to pronounce it because they when they say it in the song it's just kind of them like singing it like over like a whole measure or two but it's I believe it's Rhiannon by Fleetwood Mac um so I kind of grew up hearing Fleetwood Mac played by my mother like around the house and stuff and in the car and that kind of thing and I was just kind of like I feel like with my parents music taste I kind of disregarded a lot of it it's just kind of like my parents music and never really appreciated it for what it is and as I've gotten older I've kind of looked back at the kind of music that they listen to and uh, appreciate a lot of some of it a lot more and one of the genres or one of the artists that I really find to have liked a lot more now that I'm listening to it again is Fleetwood Mac I love all of their music um, and obviously Rhiannon or Rhiannon is uh, one of their most popular songs I just um, I really like uh, Stevie Nicks voice she's the lead singer of course um, and the, the band's general sound is very unique to them so uh, that's why it's on my list I just really like the song so for my second song, it is What Do You Want From Me by Pink Floyd. First of all, I love Pink Floyd. Like, I've always loved Pink Floyd. And this song is not really, like, one of their popular songs like and it kind of has like a different sounding to it than the rest of their music which I love but the song specifically reminds me of my cousin because she showed me this album in last summer and I didn't really like listen to much like in depth when it came out like when she showed me it but um so a few like weeks ago we were talking like Spotify party or whatever and she played the song and it just reminds me of her now and every time I think about it because like she doesn't live around here so I like miss her a lot so the song just reminds me of her because just like talking about like kind of not being around someone I guess and yeah that's why it's on my list my next song is Never Let Me Down Again by Depeche Mode So 
So this song, uh, I love Depeche Mode. I have loved them for a long time, but I remember in middle school, I kind of listened to them a little bit. I kind of stopped, but more when I got into high school, I started listening to them a lot more. Um, all their songs, just the lyrics, the sound. I just love that. I just love anything that's played on like first wave on Sirius XM. You know, I'm not gonna lie. But this song opens with, uh, he says, I'm taking a ride with my best friend. I hope he never lets me down again. And it's just like, ugh, it's just played over this beautiful sounding melody, music, however you want to say it. And I just, this song is just so good. I just love all their music. And this one is like, I like especially the end where he talks about, see the stars are shining bright and it just kind of fades out over the music. And I just think it's a really beautiful song. Just like all the other music that I listen to. That's why it's on my list. So for my fifth song, I have Let Me Down Easy by Daisy Jones and the Six. kind of funny that this song is a similar name to the previous song that you just said but um this song is kind of uh, it kind of contributes to the reasoning why i was listening to rain on by fleetwood mac with my previous listing so daisy jones and the six is actually a show that came out recently it's a show that's loosely based off of it's a show that's based on a book and the book is a book that is loosely based off the events of like fleetwood mac as a band but also just kind of tells its own story of like a band in the 70s so um it was a very good show when I watched it. I watched it when I was going on a trip and I was on a bus ride. So I was on that bus ride for like multiple hours for on a weekend. So I just binged the whole show on that trip. Um, it was a very good show. I highly recommend anyone who watches, who wants to watch it. It's on Amazon Prime. It's just a show about a band in the 70s, which is really cool. Um, but the music itself is really good. They basically, they made an album for the show of the music that they play in the show and the music that they perform and depicting how they write it, all that kind of stuff. And it, the goal there is just kind of like to recreate a uh, Fleetwood, Mas Fleetwood Mac-esque sound. And they do a pretty good job of that in the show. And also the music itself is just really good in my opinion. Um, so I had a really good time watching the show. The music is really good itself and it reminded me of Fleetwood Mac, so that's why it's on my list. The next song on my list is Policy of Truth by Depeche Mode. It's just time to pay the price Not listening to advice And deciphering in your youth On the policy of truth Again, another song by Depeche Mode Because as I said, I love them uh, Especially recently, like I said, I've been listening to them a lot um, this song is, well, it was, it was released in, uh, 1990, so it was one of their, like, more, I guess, well, not modern, but more modern songs. Um, it kind of has this, like, blues feel over it in a way, like a dreamy, like, blues sort of feel thing. Um, it's pretty unique, uh, that's why I like that. And also, it's just, it's a song about, like, once you've admitted something that you've done that's wrong, you can't take it back, and you have to, like, face those consequences because you made that decision to tell people or expose what you did. And that is just kind of repeated throughout the song. That message is really interesting and cool. I like that. And just with that unique sort of sound that they have, they did this. This is pretty different than some of their other older songs, which I also really respect and enjoy. And it's a great song. That's why it's on my list. So the sixth song on my list is Dog Tooth by Tyler the Creator. I shook your hand, I don't respect, don't call me king I'm not your twin, I'm not your brother, we just met See, I won't purchase, no Birkin Got hobbies, I got purpose, got thumpers, I'm perfect Yeah, Kelly Green Wagon look better When the gloom out, Canary shine brighter In the dark, I bought the moon out The plane fly better when it's just me and the pilot Tuition for the mileage, it's worth it for the silence There he goes, he cast broad Recently, Tyler the Creator, um, who's a popular rapper and hip hop artist in general, came out with an extended version of his album, uh, the uh, wait, what is it? Call Me If You Get Lost. I almost called it the Off Season, which is a J Cole album. Uh, yeah, Call Me If You Get Lost. He released a ex extended, he re Jesus, he released an extended edition called. Um, hold on. Call Me If You Get Lost. The Estate Sale. The Estate Sale. Yeah, that's what it's called. <laughs> um, so it added a bunch of songs towards the end of the album, all of which are really good and rival. Um, rival the original stuff and honestly are a very welcomed and really good addition to the end of the album 
Um, this song in specific, I just, it was the one that was first released when he was kind of teasing that he would be adding to the, al to the album. So because of that, I just like it stuck with me the most out of any of them. Sorry Not Sorry on there was also really, really good. And the music video for that was really well made and really showcased a change in Tyler's like music production and personality as he's become more of a face in terms of the hip hop scene. Um, but Dogtooth, in my personal opinion, uh, the the track or like the sample he uses in it is really good the verses i think are really well made and the intro is all really cool um so i think it is my personal favorite off the new edition the estate sale and that is why it's on my list okay first of my third song is all apologies by nirvana But when I was like younger in middle school, I just kind of resented them because everyone would be like, oh, you don't listen to Nirvana because like, it's a clothing plan or whatever. So I just like kind of didn't want to listen to them because I didn't want to be associated with that. But when I got like older, like in middle school, high school, I listened to them a lot more. And when I started collecting vinyls, this was my first uh, album I got. And it reminds me of like me and my dad when I got this, like so he got me a record player for Christmas and me and him were laying on my bedroom floor listening to this. And he's like, oh, this is my favorite song, All Apologies. And I just really like how it starts off like, kind of like Nirvana, they start out very like, slow in their songs and they get like really loud and like the guitar is like really cool in it. But All Apologies, it's like one of my first like Nirvana songs that like, I re kind of know all the lyrics to and it's just like, it just stuck with me because of that memory with my dad. But yeah, I just think it's a really cool song and yeah. Next song on my list is Intergalactic by the BC Boys. Jazz and A-Wall, that's our team Step us at the party, disrupt the whole scene When it comes to beats, well, I'm a thing I like my sugar with coffee and cream But I gotta keep it going, keep it going full steam Too sweet to be, sour, too nice to be Me. When I'm a tough guy style, I'm not too keen Try to change the world, I'm a plot and scheme Mario C likes to keep it clean I wanna shine like gay so thing Me. Fun rapping cause that's my dream Dream, more D for sticking to me like funny because at the time like i don't know they're just like goofy but like that's why i like them so much they're just so fun to listen to and they just make me happy like even though it's kind of goofy when they rap but it's, that's why everyone loves it right um so this song i think is just really fun it like opens up with the intergalactic planetary planetary intergalactic thing you know and the whole another dimension and i like how they do that um they use like electronic like manipulation i guess to uh you know, change their voices and raise the pitch and lower it and etc. And I really like that. And then just the rapping is just so fun and their voices all work so well together. I've been listening to a lot of Beastie Boys lately and this is one of my favorite songs by them. A pretty popular song. Most people know this one if you know Beastie Boys and that is why it's on my list. So for my seventh song, I have Metabodernity by Van Sire. I love you, but it's hard to believe With every day we'll start to see The rest is better I've always been a fan of Van Sire. I don't know them super well, but what I've I've liked what I've heard. You know, I, I don't I'm kinda of bad at like actively seeking out new music and like listening through artists discography. But um I knew a few songs by them. My favorite two were uh, That I Miss You and How Can Age. I really liked How Can Age. I, that was like one of my favorite songs for a really long time. Probably still is to be honest, but I just haven't listened to it a lot recently. Um But I've heard I had heard Metamodernity before, but I just like never actually sat down and listened to it. I think I just kinda of heard it on like TikTok and stuff. So, uh, when I actually listened to it for the first time, I was like, this is a very good song, and I think it's their most popular song. 
uh, which made me surprised I'd never heard it before, but it's a very good song, uh, the vibes of it, like the synth, I just really like how they use like synthesizers and like generally like how they just balance their instrumentals in their music, so I was a really big fan of that. Um, it kind of reminded me of like almost a combination of the previous two songs that I was a really big fan of, so I just worked well and I really vibe with it, so that's why it's on my list. Next song on my list is Love is a Stranger by Eurythmics. Love is a stranger So this is another like, I don't know, like basic 80s song, I think it's from 83. Um, it kind of has that element that you would like expect most uh, popular 80s songs to have. This uh, Eurythmics, they also made Sweet Dreams, are made of this. Everyone knows that song, you know. Um, so I guess it's similar in a way, like just the the electronic sounds, like the synth sounds in the back. They have, in this song what I like is that the the singer does like this high pitch thing with her voice and it just sounds really cool and like, I don't know, it's just really good to listen to and it's kind of just, you know, it's a basic song about love, falling in love, all that kind of stuff. And I just, the main reason why I like it is just that cool vocal vocalization in that song, that high pitch and that classic 80s sound that I've been listening to a lot recently. So that's why it's on my list. So for my eighth song, I have Neighbors by J. Cole. Back home in the South, my won't believe what it's costing, and it's fit for a king, right? Saying and explain all the pain that it cost him. A 16 should have came with a coffin. Aim in a fortune, well, maybe not the fortune, but one thing is for sure that the fame is exhausting. That's why I moved away, I needed privacy, surrounded by the trees in Ivy League. Students that's recruited higher league, thinking you do you and I do me. Cribs I've said this many times on the podcast, but J. Cole is kind of the person who's kind of who kind of got me into hip hop over time. I remember, <laughs> I think the main transition that really happened was when I listened to the off season, which Funnily enough, I literally remember how, why I listened to it. I was scrolling on Instagram one day, like two years ago, towards the end of my freshman year, and I saw uh, First We Feast, which is like a food account, like post about how like someone just like saw J. Cole ordering food at like a McDonald's or something like that. <laughs> and I was like, you know, I don't like know any of these people that are in hip hop, despite like everyone talking about them. I should just listen to one of these people's albums. And I saw like, oh, he recently released one, so I'll just listen to it. And I listened to it, and I really liked it. And then since then, I just kind of got a lot more into the genre. So anyway, I think I've said that before, but that's besides the point. Neighbors by J. Cole is a really good song, which is both, um, personally in my opinion, it's a good song instrumentally, but also I think that the messaging of the song is also really unique. So the instrumentals of the song are actually cool, or are very cool. Um, as most of his music is, but I think the messaging in the song is also cool. It's basically him saying that, like, he wanted to get away from the fame and, like, everyone recognizing him, so he moved away to, like, a really rich neighborhood, like, like in the, like, in a forest, basically, like, very secluded off, because he wanted privacy, but as he's living in this really rich neighborhood which, where he's surrounded by, like, a lot of white people, like, ev all of his neighbors, like, are very suspicious of him and are, like, think that, he, like, he's doing crimes and he's, like, breaking the law because he's a black man in, like, a world of white people, basically. And so he basically sings all about that and about how, like, um, like, the neighbors think I'm selling dope is, like, the main line of the song. Um, and, like, basically it's just him singing about how people don't, like, they don't have any reason to believe this, but they just think this because he's a black guy and because he's in a world of ri uh, rich white people. Um, I really like the ending too because he, after he sings about how he's living in this environment, about how it's nice living in this secluded area, but then he also starts talking about this, he ends the song with, so much for integration, don't know what I was thinking, I'm moving back to Southside. Basically him saying like, okay, screw this idea of like trying to get away from it because this new environment where I'm private is a lot worse because it was surrounded by racist white people, which is very interesting and that's why it's on my list. For my next song, it is Don't Speak by No Doubt.
super popular and i don't listen to like no doubt that much anymore but this song uh, specifically i've been listening to like every day for the past like two weeks and i think my cousin bryn got me like re into um no doubt because she played some of the music for her last band concert and she had like we were playing in the car with our cd or whatever but this song specifically like it just like i will scream it in the car every time i go in the car i'll like replay it twice just to like feel that like i don't know the, the same like song again um but i don't know i like i didn't like gwen stefani i like her voice in it like a lot and this whole band's really good I want to get like more into their music like when I was younger they were like my favorite band I don't listen to like a lot of their songs but like I want to get re into it again but yeah for my next song I chose graduate by third eye blind song uh third eye, this is one of their most popular songs obviously the one that most people know is semi-charmed life i don't know that much music uh by them but this is another song that i was listening to kind of on my trip over spring break and then into the month of april and recently um i think the song is kind of just about less graduating as in from like school or something like that and more about like him graduating in like a metaphorical sense as a person and moving on to bigger and better things but for me all i could think about when i listen to it is like Imagine listening to this song, like, when I graduate high school. Like, that's gonna be sad. Like, happy, but sad at the same time, you know? Bittersweet, if you will. And, um, I don't know, it's just a really fun song. I love the guitar in it. It's very great. And I do need to listen to more uh, Third Eye Blind, because I only know this and a few other songs, but this is definitely making me want to listen to them more. And this song will definitely be played once I graduate high school. That's why it's on my list. So for my ninth song, I have Good Days by SZA. Obviously everyone knows who SZA is at this point, and her most recent album was like, very very popular when it was released so I'm assuming most people most of you guys are probably familiar with the song if not you're familiar with the album SOS by SZA um I haven't even listened to this full album I've heard a lot of the music obviously through just like mainstream mainstream like TikTok and like the radio and that kind of thing but um Good Days I, I'm a really big fan of obviously it's like a it's a very emotional song it's like a breakup song but um that's like kind of not really the point I just think that um <clears throat> it tells a story that's like really relatable about just like worrying that like you wasted like the best of you on someone who doesn't really care or like that's just kind of something that like people feel a lot in relationships yeah so it's just something that like people feel in relationships and um it's just a really good song that like really enunciates that feeling really well on top of the uh instrumentals just being really really good um there's multiple different sections the chorus is obviously really really good but um it's not even really the song honestly is not really even broken down into like chorus verse intro that kind of thing it's just kind of her singing over the track like the whole time it's kind of just uninterrupted her just kind of like going off which really like it mirrors the it parallels the concept of what she's feeling like really well that she's going through these emotions after going through a breakup where she's just kind of getting mad about how i wear i, I wear i wasted the best of me on you uh i was so good to you blah 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 and she's just like going at it as she's just saying this and not really stopping so i think that like that parallel is really good with the music and the lyrics and it's obviously really well written um the music sounds incredible it really just trans it really transitions that emotion really well so that's why it's on my list the tenth and final song on my list for this month is ignorance of pride by dystopia
God, I love Dystopia so much. They're just a really, really cool uh, punk band who I started listening to probably last year around that. Sophomore year, yeah. Started sophomore year. And um, they're just a really cool punk band. And a lot of their, well, most of their songs follow themes of kind of just anti-establishment, anti-government, you know, stuff like that. Um, so this song in specific also follows that same theme. And it's kind of about how uh, it references, like, people in the military and how the government like wants people, pays people to kill and how that kind of just fosters this culture of hate and just toxicity in society and it's basically just going against that and saying how the government changes people to think that killing is something that is good when obviously it is not good. So that's why the song's on my list. I definitely dystopia is going to show up on uh, future future uh music casts because it's a great band that I like and I've been listening to them a lot more recently as well. And that is the end of my list. For my final song of the April episode, I have Are We Still Friends by Tyler the Creator. This is my second Tyler the Creator song on my list, but it's for good reason. So I've had on my past few episodes, like there's like typically one or two songs that are both songs that I've been listening to, but also songs that are representative of something else. Obviously, I had the one Hollow Knight song because that was the song I was learning on piano, and then I had the Good Kid, Mad City song because I got that on vinyl, and that is the same case for this one. So I have Are We Still Friends on here because the second vinyl that I've gotten is um. Uh, Igor by Tyler the Creator. So, obviously, I got my vinyl player very recently, and I'm just trying to expand the collection that I have. And I was really, uh, I went to Barnes and Noble a few weeks ago, and I was just looking for albums that I was like, what are albums that I really like that I could get? Because um, I just wanted to get one to add to my collection. And I was originally going to get a Mac Miller, or not Mac Miller, a Mac DeMarco album, but I opted for a for a Tyler the Creator album. And Igor is, I think, his best album. He is one of my favorite artists, so it was a very good choice in my opinion. So that is why I picked it. Obviously, it's a very good song in and of itself, but I just picked it because it is representative of that album. And for my final song, it is Digital Bath by Deftones. the biggest Deftones fan ever. I listen to them like every day. I've been listening to them for like well over a year now, like obsessed over them. And Digital Bath comes from the album White Pony, which is one of my favorite albums. And Digital Bath itself, it's like in the beginning, it kind of has this like, I don't know, like cool sounding up to the chorus. And the, like, they're known for like kind of like screaming like loud music. It's like a new metal band. And I just like how, um, when you look at the lyrics on like Spotify, it's not like a big list of them. It's like only like a page long at that. And they kind of just like repeat the same things over and over again. And they just kind of like have a slower, like in the beginning and at the end, they're slow, like way slower. And it's like let it be in- instrumental. But in the chorus, it's like loud. And like, I just like the upbeat energy with it. And like a lot of all their other songs, it's like very like upbeat and like adrenaline album is like super like, kind of like more like metal sounding. But I just like Digital Bath a lot because it just reminds me of the summer, honestly, and just I'm listening to it a lot more recently because I'm preparing for summer. But yeah. So So that was our listing for April. Thank you for coming on, Elliot. Of course. We may see you again, hopefully. We'll also hopefully bring some more guests on over the next few episodes or honestly for as long as this podcast lives. Um, Thank you guys for listening. We hope you liked our lists. So yeah, yeah. I think it was a it was a solid list. Elliot, what do you think? I liked it. It was very fun. What is the best song that you had on your list? Do you think your top five? Mm. Like what? What's what's your favorite out of the five you said? I think I'm biased, but I think Digital Path <laughs> because I love Deftones. But well, that's you fair. Know. That's fair. That's fair. Kevin, what about you? Um, I liked the, I liked my list a lot this time around. I would mm-hmm. probably say honestly, I'd have to go with either. Rhiannon or Arrowroot. I think Arrowroot is just really good. It's a really well-made song. For me, probably Blue Shot or Ignorance of Pride. 
Although they're all amazing or else they wouldn't have made my list. Agreed. Oh, yes. I can but definitely I'm feel that, like, here. I can definitely feel right now that, like, my music, like you were saying, like, it's kind of like, it's almost like it's in a transitional period from, like, yeah. going into, like, mm-hmm. starting to listen to the summer music again. Oh, yeah. I definitely feel that. Which is very exciting. Yeah. No, I thought it was a pretty solid list and a solid episode. We're definitely going to have guests in the future. As Kevin said, I already have one in the works that I'm trying to get to come for the May podcast. So, I guess you guys will find out next time. Thank you all for listening. I know there's a lot of you. And we will see you on the next podcast. Bye. See you guys.